Hello, now my Sunday. I'll start again because I think the last run of stuff that I put out has probably come to the end of its discussion. Um, I found it interesting that Brits generally wanted to discuss it, but Americans did not. But I think it's dead. I'll keep bringing the things up and you can discuss them when and if you want to. I'm going to put as the my little strap picture above this so have a read of that and that is just to say because it's not got nothing to do with this video the people don't learn people don't learn very easily at all we can go into it Sunday <laughs> we could go into why that is but I think all we can um, fruitfully do now is just accept the fact that people don't learn. They generally get an idea established in their heads and nothing shifts it. Nothing shifts it. There'll be um, all the things... There'll be people that have listened to just about everything I've ever put out and not really listen to a word of it. Wouldn't have affected what they think at all, really. A little bit here and there at the edges, but fundamentally, what they thought four years ago is still what they think now, even though I might have put out a thousand different bits of information that contradicts it. Right, well, I was going to go to banking with this one, and it started in a comment yesterday where I said that the banking system doesn't have to fail. Isn't bound to fail, I think it was. And it was with Windy. Welcome back, Windy, by the way. And it was one of those comments, or you get them in arguments, where Windy came back and said, I didn't say it was bound to fail. And then my natural comment back would be, I didn't say that you said that it was bound to fail. So Windy didn't say it was bound to fail, but I said in my comment reply back to him, the, ba the banking system isn't bound to fail. It's been kicking around in vaguely in its same state or its basic system since I, I i use 1660 i forget exactly what happened in 1660 but something happened in 1660 and just a bit like let's say the um the motor car hasn't changed since its inception uh with four wheels doors seats brakes accelerator internal combustion engine hasn't really changed since its inception banking hasn't really changed since its inception and isn't bound to fail isn't bound to fail at all um if an, an argument could be put forward for its bound to failness this way and this might um might help if it was bound to fail at all, central banks, as you know now, have got this idea that 2% inflation is right. So if a bank loans out, you know, a 30-year loan or 25, doesn't matter what sort of loan, the money it's going to be paid back in, in year 1, 2, 3, 10, 15, 25, 28, 30, will be eroded compoundingly by two percent every single year so i can't do the figures straight off my head but you can imagine after 30 years the money it's being paid back in isn't hasn't got the buying power of the money it lent out in the beginning so if you wanted to say the banking system hasn't got a future you could say it's because of that that the central banks who are basically trying to look after their interests are always eroding the money that they're going to be paid back in, which is a great advantage for the people that borrow the money as opposed to the banks who are the lenders of the money. The, 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 this will cause the numbers to go up, but we've got, you know, back in the old days, they, they had zeros that they could, with their dippy in ink pens, they could put on the end of it, and now we've got zeros that we can just type on the computer. I mean, it really doesn't matter numerically that they go up at all.
that's all I want to say, really. The banking system isn't inherently bound to fail. And if it was, I would say the more reasons that it was bound to fail are certainly not the reasons that most people would come up with. What happened, basically, and, or let, let's put it this way, if we wanted to do something that lots of countries are looking into um, ways of better regulating banking, one that came to me this morning was um, let them borrow and lend. And if you want to know what I mean by borrow in the borrow and lend, uh, you can ask, ask me. But it's quite important. But it's difficult to explain, so I'll just leave it aside. So lend, borrow and lend, but lend 5% more, let's say, than they did the year before. That would have strange um, knock-on effects that they'd always try and keep at that limit. Um, so they'd be always 5% more than the, the year before because they knowing that the year after, just in case they wanted to, they'd always want to keep to the limit. But what I'd be trying to go against there is the fact that b banks can lend into booms, like we've had these housing booms, and that would stop the banks basically bidding up the price of housing as they have done in the Western world over the last decades really but they came on with a real run in the um obviously up to the up to the crisis which over in debt debts the 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 populace and then we have this um what does ku call it balance sheet recession where basically oh another thing i'm going to put again the link to econ talk so that's up i'll put the econ talk link down first 40 minutes of it give it a listen if you've been listening to me you should be able to understand and point out in your own mind as they talk the interviewer and the interviewee and know where they're going wrong and shout it at them it's a very very instructive 40 minutes give it a go so banking system is fine basically it's just that they took it too far it was human error that they just got carried away with themselves not lending just five percent more than the year before but huge amounts more than the than the year before which put themselves in danger because it put the people in danger and it has put the economy in danger as a whole because the people are over indebted now and listening to the econ talk how it does come up so many things come up there's a really so much in that econ talk it's really worth listening to but it's not brought up as much as it should be that when the people fall into a balance sheet recession in other words they want to go out and transact more as i've said they naturally want to do but their pocketbook their wallet their purses their accounting sheet their household balance books says you really shouldn't and but not only that your neighbors have come round and talked over coffee and said that they're thinking of um, pulling back a bit and saving a bit more money and the general meme in the neighborhood and in the country is to pull back and save a bit more and it gets to everybody in the end and the whole economy is less transactions that is the problem and that was caused by the banks going over the f my five percent limit they they over indebted the people by um what do the police call it um, can't remember wait in, in, um aiding and abetting aiding and abetting the over indebtedness of the people they they the worse than that they they pimped it they they definitely pimped it they encouraged it and um it was good for everybody while it lasted but it's an 80 year sort of thing so we could even put five percent limits in now um but they'd soon be taken off just before the the next time it crashed but that would be in another 80 80 years and the numbers then could be you know a house could cost a billion money but it wouldn't really matter you just add more noughts on it really doesn't matter the as long as the central bank can keep hold of that two percent thing um and banks don't go above a five percent thing the whole banking system 
it's it's not brilliant it's far far from brilliant and as i said a couple of weeks ago um it's the most ridiculous way that you can think of to supply the transactors with their transaction tokens is by going to the bank and borrowing them it's a really silly way of doing it but it's just about held together and finish again with up top there it ain't going to change anytime soon because unless absolutely forced kicking and screaming and wailing and gnashing of teeth into change people don't basically change at all that's it that's my sunday sermon it looks a bit looks a bit like i've got a anglican dog collar on doesn't it bye <laughs>